the odds are you grew up craving a bottle of Coca-Cola. Many of us did, as our parents did before us. Coca-Cola has transcended multiple generations and nurtured many more. The company's roots are so deep that they're yet to be uprooted. Instead, they keep spreading into several corners of the globe. What's the secret? Is it the recipe locked in a vault or ads from time immemorial? The jury is out on that one, but there can be no denying that Coca-Cola is one of the world's fewest global brands. In this video, we're gonna show you 10 crazy things you need to know about Coca-Cola. We're Only Brands, the channel dedicated to bringing you awesome, regular content on the world's hottest brands. Let's do this. Number one, Cocaine Cola. You may have heard the legendary tale of Coca-Cola's secret recipe and how it's locked up in a vault somewhere. Depending on how ambitious the storyteller is, the top secret location of this top secret recipe is either beneath the company's headquarters in Atlanta or in the desert caves of the Jumbo Montu. The bottom line is that the secret recipe recipe doesn't exist. Not in secret, anyways. John Pemberton invented Coca-Cola in 1886 as a brain tonic to relieve exhaustion and headaches. The pharmacist was inspired by a popular French concoction called Vin Mariani, invented in France. Vin Mariani was also a brain tonic, but an alcoholic one. It was a mixture of Bordeaux red wine and cocaine. So John Pemberton started his Coca-Cola syrup to cater for alcohol abstinent customers. Pemberton took the name Coca-Cola from syrup's most essential ingredients cocaine and cola nut. The other ingredient of the drink was caffeine. He began selling the syrups on taps in St. Jacob's Pharmacy and other local fountains in Atlanta. What a time to be alive. Number two, the revolution. Even after John Pemberton's Coke efforts, the masses could only get so high. Another pharmacist turned businessman in the city, Asa Kandler Briggs, acquired the company in 1891 for a total of $2,300 and began the sort of aggressive marketing the company is known for today. Under his leadership, the company massively broke new ground in sales, which rose from about 9,000 gallons of syrup to 370,877 gallons between 1890 and and 1900. The company established syrup producing plants in Dallas, LA and Philadelphia. The company started selling the product in every corner of the United States and neighboring Canada. What a decade that was. But the crowning achievement of Candler's revolution came at the tail end of 1899 when Coca-Cola signed an agreement with an independent bottling company to buy the product, bottle it, and distribute the drink. This marked the beginning of an era for the beverage industry. In 1929, Candler sold the company to a group of Atlanta investors led by Ernest Woodruff. Number three, not just Coke. When you say Coca-Cola, Fanta, and Coke come to mind. However, Coca-Cola's product depth runs very deep, way too deep. The company's products have kept a serious chokehold on the worldwide beverages market. In fact, Coca-Cola is responsible for over 3.1% of worldwide beverage consumption. There are over 55 billion beverages served daily, and Coca-Cola drinks amount to 1.7 billion in total. Coca-Cola has a portfolio of over 3,500 beverages with 500 brands that range from soda, energy drinks, fruit juice, and soy-based drinks. Trust me, you can rarely escape the big bad Coca-Cola. Only 30 three non-alcoholic brands worldwide generate over a billion dollars in revenue. Coca-Cola owns a whopping 15 of them. Besides the brands you're familiar with, you're likely consuming other Coca-Cola products without even knowing it. An obvious surprise might await once you actually check the product label, which several thousand of consumers never do. Don't fancy soda? Well, Coca-Cola sells more than 1,000 kinds of juice drinks. In fact, there are so many Coca-Cola products that it would take you 11 years to try each product per day. Feeling adventurous? You're welcome to try. In fact, another big Coca-Cola product people consumed for a while was movies. Coca-Cola acquired Columbia Pictures in light of the company's financial issues, but later sold to Sony in 1989. During their ownership stint, Coca-Cola produced movies like Ghostbusters, Karate Kid, and stripes. <laughs> wow. And by the way, a lot of hard work and care goes into these videos. So if you could help us out and click that subscribe button, we would greatly appreciate it. Number four, economy giants. In big thanks to its immense catalog, Coca-Cola is one of the world's wealthiest corporations. The company's $38.5 billion revenue is equivalent to the world's 103rd largest national economy. In fact, Coca-Cola as a company earns more revenue than the total GDP of countries like Senegal, Jamaica, Cyprus, and some other 110 countries. Interestingly, its revenue only ranks 95th in the United States, which is way behind giants like Apple, 
Walmart, and Google. However, Coca-Cola remains the undisputed king of the beverage industry, worth more than Red Bull, Budweiser, and Starbucks combined. The company's closest competitor is PepsiCo, but the gap between both companies is a flattering gap of about $20 billion. Coca-Cola dominates the US market share with 44% and Pepsi holds 26%. Number 5. Metals Although now rendered as a bygone era that passed with rom-com movies, the age of vending machines is still quite relevant today. Coca-Cola's boxes were a thrill of several generations and may yet persist. The company's army of metal cubes numbers up to 2.8 million. In fact, if these boxes were stacked end-to-end, -end, the mega monstrosity would take up to 150.2 million cubic feet of space, which is the size of four Empire State Buildings. Besides the vending machines, Coca-Cola also uses an enormous amount of metal to produce its popular cans. About 300,000 tons of aluminum are used for the production of these cans in the US, which accounts for 17.4% of the output of the country's entire aluminum industry. Number 6. Santa meets the gang. In the fair game of advertising, the big companies market their products to get bigger, and when they do, they pursue more aggressive advertising to become even bigger. For Coca-Cola, advertising is the core part of what made the company the world's most recognizable brand. The word Coca-Cola has become the second most recognizable word after OK, and 94% of the world's population recognizes the unmistakable red and white logo. The company's marketing budget is pretty huge and reportedly bigger than those of Microsoft and Apple combined. In 2010, Apple had a budget of $1.6 billion for marketing and Microsoft had a little $691 million set aside. However, Coca-Cola's advertising budget was a whopping $2.9 billion. One of the company's crazier stunts was trying to convince people to choose a bottle of Coca-Cola over that morning coffee for the fix of caffeine. It gained some traction initially, but the idea of starting the day with a fizzy soda was even crazier than the campaign and lost its appeal to the populace. Santa and Coca-Cola share a long history. The company hired a certain Haddon Sundblom to paint an image of Santa holding Coke bottles, and that image is quite like what we see as Santa today. An old man with a snow white beard brandishing a wide, friendly smile in a red outfit. Number 7. The Sugar Rush Whatever amount of sugar you think people get from Coca-Cola, be rest assured it is 10 times more. Americans consume about 400 servings of Coca-Cola per year. There's an average of 39 grams of sugar per Coca-Cola serving, which means the average American in just 10.8 pounds of Coca-Cola sugar every year. With a little math, the American population consumes about 1.7 million tons of Coca-Cola sugar yearly. That's fascinating. However, Coca-Cola's wings spread far beyond the shores of America. Our planet Earth is full of soda gobblers. In fact, the average person consumes a Coca-Cola product at least once every four days. However, the Mexicans are Coca-Cola's true ride or die. In Mexico, the average person consumes about 700 Coca-Cola drinks in a year which means a yearly consumption of 60 pounds per person. That's almost double what Americans consume. In fact, the average Mexican consumes more Coca-Cola than the average American, Indian, British and Chinese combined. A big factor in Coca-Cola's tremendous Mexican fan base is the company's sponsorship of the 1970 World Cup and the Mexico City Olympics of the 1968. Those were some very memorable tournaments and a source of national pride. Mexicans cherish both events and the Coca-Cola that came with it. That was an especially juicy fact, right? I think that one definitely deserves a thumbs up. Number eight, Trendsetter. Besides signing one of the first beverage bottling deals in history, Coca-Cola has started many incredible concerts that have poured over an age like fine wine. Although six packs have become the patron saint of beers, Coca-Cola invented the concept in 1923. It was a blessing at the time and still is since customers could now carry more than one bottle at a time with stress. Some years later, Coca-Cola debuted the first open top cooler, which had the capacity for over 72 bottles and kept them nicely chilled. By the 1940s, Coca-Cola hired Raymond Lowy to make these coolers portable. And voila, perhaps one of the company's most iconic moments was when astronauts of the Shuttle Challenger drank their favorite Coca-Cola in special cans during a space mission in 1985. As the first drink in space, Coca-Cola has deemed it fit to unveil a new drink which will taste like space. Way to go. Number 9. War Effort As the American staple 
Coca-Cola executive Robert Woodruff declared that every American serviceman should get a soft drink for five cents no matter what it costs the company. During World War II, over five billion bottles were distributed to men in the U.S. military. Age-old soda fountains were also shipped to where troops were stationed, like Florida and Panama City. Nothing was more fitting than a cheap, chilled bottle of Coca-Cola during those trying times. Number 10. Bromance McDonald's had just started in the 1950s, but they took a brilliant baby step when they approached Coca-Cola in 1955, and McDonald's executive, Ray Kroc, set up the partnership that would become one of history's most successful tag teams. Move aside, the Hardys. One round of handshakes later, and the two have been in business ever since. In fact, McDonald's used some of Coca-Cola's offices during its early days. Today, McDonald's is Coca-Cola's biggest customer. Customer. Thanks for sticking around to the end. We hope you enjoyed the video, but why stop now? Click these videos here for more awesome content.